Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. As always, I'm delighted to be joined by Dirty Derry Matthews. Derry, how's things, bud? All good, mate. Everything's good so far. Um, I'm up here today in Bolton. I arrived yesterday to do help Dominic Vaughan to show him McCollum's corner for the Commonwealth title. I built that. I won myself at lightweight. And it's good to be helping you know the team, as in Danny's, Danny's not here, so I'm going to help Dominic to the corner and, and hopefully see Sean do a masterclass and perform and become a champion. Talk to me about that fight then, obviously, tough fight for Sean, first fight at lightweight coming down from super lightweight um, against a tough opponent in Gavin Gwynn. Just talk to me about this fight itself. I think Sean, you know, listen, uh, when I first set eyes on Sean, I said to Danny, I think he's got everything to be a world champion. I mean, I'm no expert, but his skills pay bills and he's outstanding. He's got everything what a fighter needs, size, skill, punch a bit as well public nuisance as well people love him and that's what it's about and I think tonight I think everyone will get to see the real Sean McComb and you know he's, he's, again he's got a good opponent but the better the opponent I think the better Sean will be um, and as I keep saying he's got skills what, what people dream about having and I think he's got everything you know he's got a good team around him he, I've, from the from what I've heard of Dominic he's done everything right in camp he's been spot on in the gym and I'm looking forward, you know, to seeing him showcase his skills. Let's jump into to to your fighter, Jazza Dickens. Big news for for Jazz, obviously winning the golden contract, but uh, he's got his world title shot against Kid Galahad. Now they have met before. I think it was I think it was eight years ago for the British title, but now Jazz is a different fighter. Kid's a different fighter. I mean, your thoughts on that fight? Listen, it's a great fight. It's a tough fight, but it's a one. It's one more more confidence of winning. Jazz is confident of winning. Um, it's a fight that Jazz had wanted. He, he said it for, for the last 18 months. He wants to fight Galahad. We've done loads of rounds sparring. Again, it, I keep saying it, it's most probably one of the best best featherweight fights out there around. It's, it's, it's superb for the fans. It's superb for us. It's, it's great for, for Kate Galahad. And it was brilliant that MTK won the purse bids. And, you know, we're looking forward to it. And I'm over the moon. I'm over the moon for Jazza. But it's just about being disciplined now and, and getting the, getting the job done, getting into camp on Monday, starting camp, and going from there. Obviously, Jazz has got his world, world title shot. So how how is Jazz approaching this fight? I know he, he has. There was a good fight against Kid Galad. Some people had him winning rounds and stuff. But obviously, the fitness levels of Jazz are, you could see him arguably failed him in, in that fight a little bit. But now, how are you approaching this fight with Jazz? I just think he's a different he's a different fighter. He's matured. Over the years, um, he'd have learned from the mistakes. I think he was bouncing everywhere in the first fight. Um, just, just little things, what, what he's had to tweak. But again, Jazz is a too professional. Jazz knows what, he, what he's got to do to win. And Jazz will go to the well to win. Um, he knows that mistakes might have been made in the first fight. Obviously, he was with a different different corner team, different different setup, And now he's, he's come to George and myself. And we're gonna, you know, we've tweaked a few things, and hopefully, oh we, we build it on, and, and we go from there. And shut up! Uh, you just ruined the interview now. And then from there, <laughs> Lee Eaton does this every interview. So don't worry about that. He just wants the limelight. He thinks he it's all about him. It's the Lee Eaton show. Um, <laughs> but now we'll go back to the Galahad and the Galahad and, and the Jazza fight. Jazza, you know, he made he made a little few mistakes. I thought he won. I watch it again. I keep watching and watching over it. He won a lot of the rounds in the fight, but he seems to get tired. His legs seem to get tired, but we'll address that. Um, he's got a great nutritionist on board. He was out from day one. Carl Carl Evans from Liverpool John Moores University, and you know things are good. Things are good. Um, fingers crossed, everything goes well. Obviously, you didn't manage to win. Of the four major world title fights, I believe you had an IBO or something along them lines, was it? Or I had the, the, the WBA interim, yeah. which is now classed yeah. as the regular world. So if you're a regular world champion, what you are now, you're a, you're an interim world champion then. Um, I had that, but there's no been no Liverpool coach who's won a world title. Is that right? That's right. Um, you know, the two Smith brothers were with Joe Gallagher. Bellew was with Caldwell. Um, so there's Bellew with Caldwell, the two Smith brothers... But with Joe Gallagher and then it'd be ja- Jazza. Who else? Would we had anyone else? Not with that. Oh no, Conti and Hawkinson. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, so we'll go with Conti and Hawkinson. Went with a scouts trainer. The two Smith brothers were with Joe Gallagher and Bellew was with um, Dave Caldwell. So 
There's been no Liverpool. No bit of history there for you, Derry? For George, not yeah. for me, for George. Yeah. Um, George is the head coach. He'll always be the head coach for me, even when he retires, he'll still be the head coach. That's the way, that's the way we are. It's for George. Um, he'll be 83 years of age. Well, 82, I think. 82, 83 years of age. We're a world champion. Fairy tale doesn't get better than that at all, mate. But um, obviously, you're fighting for the IBF world title, which is Josh Warrington's old belt. He vac- vacated that belt now. Obviously, I'm guessing you watched that fight last weekend with, with, with Josh. Now, it seems these Mexicans, man, they love to cause an upset. It seems that we got the, a massive upset last week. And what's your thoughts on uh, Josh Warrington on that fight last weekend? I felt sorry for him. If, if I'm honest, he'd give a world title up. It's a, meant, meant to be it. Push over for a, for a bigger fight, and it never happened. And you can only feel sorry for him. He's a, I'm, I've been a fighter, I've been in that position. Um, fingers crossed, he can come back. You know, he's, he's a good kid. He's got a, his dad's a cracking fella. And you know, I've seen a lot of stuff on Twitter and, and social media giving him stick. Come on, mm. he's, a, he's a fighter. Look who he's beat previous: Frampton, Selby, Galahad. He's beat three world-class fighters. <laughs> he was due an easy fight. But it never worked out to be easy, so you know, let's hope he can come back a better, a better man. I, I think he will. I just think things might have changed in, in his camp. Maybe I, I heard that he was getting doing a lot of strength and conditioning. You know, maybe he's got to address things in there. But you know, fingers crossed. I like Josh as a person. I like I like his dad as well, and I hope he can come back. I I, I, I agree. Um, obviously, I won't keep you much longer, but I want to get your thoughts on the, the fight tomorrow night with Josh Kelly and David Avanishi. Now it's a fight that we've been waiting for best part of two years I think it's been postponed four four times but we've finally got it on tomorrow night what's your thoughts on that? Again for me I always say skills pay bills I just think he's I think he's I think he's very very good I think he's very very special Josh Kelly is by the way um, and I can't see him missing the target I just I just cannot see and I, I don't think Adam Bird will put him in the fight if he didn't think he'd win it's going to be a bit like Sean's mm-hmm. tonight uh, I think it's going to be the same same sort of fight I think you know uh, David's going to go at him as much as he can, and, and, and Josh is just going to come off in all angles and hit him that much. And I'm going to, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick it out there that I think Josh Kelly stops him. I honestly, I think not, not by power or I just think he oh, hits him that much, hits him, hits him too much, um, and stops him, stops him about eight to ten rounds. One final word on on Jazza and Kid Galahad, the world title fight, and obviously. The fans that we we we're looking forward to it, but one final word on that fight itself. I think it's a great fight. Um, I'm, one thing I'm, I'm glad to be a part of um, a small part. The main part, Jazza. Jazza. It's all about Jazza now. It's all about him getting the focus, getting you know the team around him, doing everything right, ticking every box. Sparring partners got to be important. His running's got to be important. His conditioning and his, most of all his boxing work got to be important. And he's a two champion. He's a he's a. He's not honest to say, he does everything spot on. He doesn't need telling twice, so it's going to be an easy camp, if you know what I mean. It's going to be an easy camp. When I say easy, it's going to be hard camp, but easy for the coach because everything you want him to do, he does anyway. Perfect. Uh, well, Derry, good luck tonight with, with, with Sean, uh, fighting for your old belt, the Commonwealth Lightweight title. Uh, good luck with that, and thanks for this Fightful TV, mate. No worries, man. Sorry for leading, ruining the interview. He does it all the time, mate, so don't worry about it. Cheers, Derry. He wants to lime like that's all. That's it, he wants to be famous. <laughs> Cheers, Derry.